Hi, this is Philip Cargon. This is T with the Druid 125. I am working off an iPad because I tried to use my desktop just now and it's it it refused it said my the permission of my camera wasn't working. Something to do. I think I've been using Zoom and something um, has gone wrong. Ellie. How nice to see you here. Um, can you um, can you um, hear me? Let me know. Send a bubble or something up if you can hear me. I'm restarting my my desktop and seeing. I think somehow using um, using Zoom has somehow meant that my desktop won't access my uh, camera. So I'm having to use this. Um, this um, iPad and the thing about the iPad here is it doesn't show me your comments you could all be typing and we can't hear a word you're saying and I wouldn't know so annoying um, but anyway um, what I want to what I want to talk about and I, and I can't even I have to look here okay what I want to do I think we're all probably going through this we're all probably getting Facebook and Zoom and we've got a thing called Slack that we use now too and WhatsApp between all of them uh, that everything's pinging and beeping and all the time just while I'm talking to you keep talking amongst yourselves what I love it is when people say hello to each other within the group which is just great um, and uh, if you do that I'll see if I can get this Chrome thing working and hopefully I can switch over to that because my arm is going to get very tired holding this up, I can tell you. Um, okay, well, I'll click that, click that. Uh, use camera. Doesn't. Uh, yeah, oh dear. Okay, I'm going to have to just keep talking and I uh, hope you can hear me. Uh, and uh, I could do something weird like watch watch it on the desktop and see if I can I can uh, if it's making sense and I can hear myself if that's at all possible um, let's have a look here we go and there I am looking at myself that's very odd but it's delayed and I can see little things going up watch it on the desktop and see if I can yes the sounds all right isn't it I can hear myself I'm sorry for this. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. And I can get your comments up. The iPad is lovely and clear. Hooray. Penny Billington a bit quiet. Hi from Oxford. That's actually brilliant, says Laura Kloshar. Okay, I'm going to pitch straight in. My apologies for the uh, this delay. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, limitations and the limitless. If you think about it, if you draw draw a circle and um, draw, draw a big circle which depicts before the lockdown your limitations, your physical limitations and how far you could travel, the limitations that um, money, your body, um, your circumstances place upon you and everybody's circle will be, will be different. Now with the lockdown suddenly the circle's smaller, there's a second circle we have to draw which is smaller and a lot of our frus frustrations and issues will come because we're pushing we remember how we could go to the pub we could go over travel there and go and see our friends and go and hug our loved ones and so on but we're in this smaller circle and if we if we're getting frustrated and upset about it we're pushing against this this smaller circle we want it to get back to the bigger one. But if I ask myself the question, where is the limitless? The freedom that I truly seek, where do I find it? And when I ask myself that question, the answer comes to me that it's right in the centre. If I draw a dot, the, 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 the limitless is right in the middle there, not smudged, but right in the middle there. 
What I mean by that is the limitless, from my understanding of it, see what you think, the limitless is only available to me at a spiritual level. It's only when I go inside, it's only when I meditate, it's only when I go outside to connect with the beauties of nature, it's only when I transcend the limitations of my everyday mind that I can attain the limitless. This is why that film The Secret and the book was so terrible, because it was a classic example of what's called misplaced concreteness, misplaced levels. It led one to believe that you could apply spiritual principles to gaining material things. And you know all that kind of claptrap that uh, one gets around, you know, you can do anything you set your mind to, you know. Well, you can't actually. Try telling that to somebody uh, who's meditating or eating a sandwich on a beach in Indonesia as the tsunami wave is starting to come towards them. Uh, they do not have limitless power at that moment. If they want to stay alive, they have to run, and they are limited by the physical constraints of how fast they can run and so on. If I wanted, however much I wanted to be a nuclear physicist now, I would not be able to come one, become one, I can assure you. Um, and you wouldn't want me to become one either. Um, so limitlessness is a quality that is, is related to the spiritual world, not the physical world. But here's the rub, I think. Here's the interesting nub of it, which is that we've, we connect or can connect with the limitless through limitation. This is why the magician casts the circle. This is why we limit our area of working in Druidry, for instance, and work uh, within a sacred grove, within a circle. This is how creative people get their work done. They have the limitation of the medium they're working in, the limitation of words if they're a writer, the limitation of clay if they're a potter, and so on. And by getting into the centre of that, those limitations, they break through to another level. And I've come across a, a writer, Roberto Calasso, who writes these extraordinary books. And he goes into one detail, for instance, one book that I've ordered, I haven't read it yet, but it sounds extraordinary, where he takes just the colour of pink that Tiepolo uses in his paintings, and he kind of dives into that colour and by diving into that colour pink that Tiepolo uses, he connects to ideas of culture and history and spirituality and religion and so on. So, so, by, so by turning away, instead of trying to push at those limitations, I believe that the the art or the trick or the way is to turn around and to walk right into the heart of those limitations. Robert Frost said the way out is the way through. Uh, you may have had this experience in your life where you're kind of entangled in some sort of issue whether it's a relationship or a problem of some kind and this isn't always the case, I must stress, but sometimes you will find that actually the way to get out of the situation is to go through it. Is to, so it's a path of engagement, not of avoidance or denial. So that was, these are the thoughts that have been coming to me uh, over the last, uh, th th through the day. The way out of the circle is through the centre, as Sarah Breen says. Exactly. Rachel, I have found that having very little has allowed me to be limitless and expand my horizon in the mind and body. You've, I think that's absolutely it, Rachel. There's this lovely concept called the hallowing of limitation. You know, um, Thoreau said, you know, a man... Uh, oh, gosh, the quote's gone for me. The ma a man is um, who, you know, is whose pockets are light is rich in the soul or something like that. And there's a way in which uh, possessions and riches can become... I was reading the other day of how the Barclay brothers, who are a strange, reclusive, multi-multi sort of millionaires or billionaires, uh, having this 
awful wrangle that sounds straight out of um, some horrible novel or film, you know, fighting, the whole family fighting over, over money, of course. Um, must be absolutely miserable. Um, so, um, Sean, uh, this needs a microphone. I'm sorry. Um, uh, yes, I'm using an iPad because the, the, the laptop, the, the desktop went wrong. Um, yes, and Rachel's saying this, this, this limitation has allowed her practice to become more potent. Exactly. So, so that's, that's, I think that's the message for me about this period of limitation is to not to resist it because I can't uh, control it. It's not, it's not um, within my circle of, of uh, control, of ability to control, but within my circle, I can actually work with it. So let's, let's have a meditation now. Let's, um, let's go into this delineated space of the sacred grove. Um, so let's imagine now that we're walking through the forest and coming to a clearing, a sacred grove of the Druids. And of course that clearing is a limited space. It's enough space for us to walk around to find just the right spot that we want to be seated in. And then we seat ourselves. And we become aware of the earth beneath us, the trees around us and the sky above us. And breathing in deeply, you hold your breath for a moment and then let it out slowly and fully. And as you do this, you tune in to the power of the earth. And you can feel the energy of the earth rising up into you, bringing you a sense of contentment, of feeling grounded and connected to the earth. And then you become aware of the spirit of the trees around you, of the spirits of the trees. And you can sense them, their presence, their peace and their power. Blessing you with their energy. And you breathe in the scent of the pines. The scent of the trees. And then you become aware of the sky above you. And you breathe in the energy of the sky. And the energy of the sky meets the energy of the earth within the centre of your being. And then aware of yourself being seated in the grove, you move your hand, just one hand, to touch the soil in front of you to give your love to the earth and then slowly and deliberately you bring your hand up and you bring your palm up towards your heart and as you do that you feel your body and you sense how you are contained within your body. And you sense your body as a container. You really open to and allow that feeling of containment that the body provides. And you allow your sense of self to fill this container. As you breathe in and you breathe out, you just allow yourself to fully occupy who you are, this container, your body totally relaxing into your awareness of the body and of the way that it acts as the vessel of your soul. And you feel your love for this vessel, your love for this container. And your respect for this container too. I respect 
the boundaries of my body. And feeling love and respect for the body, you sense yourself opening your inner eyes in the grove and looking out and seeing the trees, each tree discreet, individual, unique. And you respect and love the uniqueness and the particularity of each tree in your grove. You place your hand again on the ground and ask for a blessing on this earth, a blessing on this land, and a blessing on all our lives. And then with a deep breath in, and a full breath out. Gradually you allow your awareness of this scene of being in the sacred grove to fade as you become aware of being seated here facing your computer, your tablet, your phone. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. It's lovely to. It's lovely that we're getting later in the year, and we can. I can see the trees out through the window there. And it's lovely to see Keith. Keith Southall there. I can only see two of you marked on my screen, but uh, greetings to everyone. And I can see on my other screen, yes, that we're still live, and uh, many, many blessings. Um, I hope the coming week is rich and fertile for you and that however frustrating the limitations are for you, that perhaps in some way this idea can help that within the heart of limitation is the reality of limitlessness, the gateway to true freedom and joy. So many, many blessings, much love, and have a wonderful week to come, and I'll see you next week. Okay. <laughs>